Hello, I'm Charles Moffat, and today we're looking at a package of books that had arrived for me. Now, it's inside this plastic thing because that got opened somehow, apparently by the Royal Mail. So, I'm guessing they were looking for drugs. They were like, oh, it's just a bunch of books. They're like, it's a big, happy box. Let's, let's open it and see if there's any drugs inside. And then they were like disappointed. I was like, oh, it's just books, never mind. Okay, so we've got A Moment in Time by Martin Dukes, which apparently the main character is called Alex Truman. That Which the Deep Heart Knows by R.J. Weldrake. Okay, a note. And Martin Dukes again. Hearts of Ice and Stone. Okay. I think I could make a much longer video with this. Okay. To Charles, all the best for a great read. Martin, okay. What's this one say on the inside? To Charles, all the best for a great read. RJ. Wait, hey, is that the same handwriting? Let's let's put our detective glasses on here. There's the writing for that one. There's the writing for this one. You notice how they write two Charles? I think this is the same person. <laughs> All right, so I, I have a hunch that this is by a uh, pseudonym of Martin Dukes. Okay, so. Which one should we look at here? And how much time do I have? Because I have to go pick up my son from school soon. Okay, so let's look at this one first. So, Alex Truman has just turned 15. He's a typical teenager, sometimes a bit spotty, which I'm presuming is pimples, sometimes a bit nerdy, but not exactly popular. But he's not one of the cool kids at school, okay? But being cool isn't as good as the talent Alex discovers he has. Stopping time. Ooh, I like good time paradox. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So the boy who can stop time. Okay. Let's do that one. Wait, did that say Zanzibar? It does say Zanzibar. Okay. Uh, there's a place in Toronto called Zanzibar. Um, it appears in the one uh, Incredible Hulk movie. Uh, in the big fight scene at the end. Because that's where they filmed it, outside the Zanzibar. Uh, and I'm not going to say what the Zanzibar actually is. Anyway. Uh... I'm guessing there's not going to be any maps in this one because it looks like it's a urban fantasy, All right. set in you know contemporary Earth, so you don't really need maps. Okay, table of contents. Some of the chapters are shorter, some of them are going to be longer. 16 pages, 22 pages. Okay. Well, I'm going to stress for time here, so let's look at the next one, also by Martin Dukes. Hearts of Ice and Stone. Hey, Laura never realized that she was different. Hello, squirrel. Okay. Uh, or that she was touched in some way by the heavens until she first set foot, contrary to all law and tradition, within the portal of Dark Harrow. Here in the remote eastings of Britannia, far from the wealth and the power of London, the dead lie sleeping beneath the ancient towers and cloisters of the Great Abbey. For some, destiny dictates that their long slumber shall endure until the last trump sounds. Shouldn't that be trumpet? Last trump sounds, and all the all the dead ri shall rise from the graves. But for some, the care of the Camalodalite order shall reawaken them long before that day. 
no one has ever been able to look upon the countenances of the departed and tell whether they may be awakened, whether they, their hearts are of ice or of stone, until now. Okay? Caught between the competing affections of those who love her, threatened by those who would destroy her, Laura finds herself enmeshed in a web of conspiracy that draws upon her deepest resources and enforces choices upon her that are the most momentous kind. Okay. Now, you'll notice here that this looks a bit damaged. Now, that could be because it was opened by, you know, postal workers over in uh, the UK because they thought drugs were inside or something. I don't know. But, yeah, this is, looks to be using much of the same formatting as the other book. And... Yeah, no illustrations, no map. But, looks like relatively short chapters as well. Not too long. Uh, judging by this. So, like, that one's like 17 pages, 18 pages, 20 pages, 18. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at this one. R.J. Weldrake. Is it signed? Two Charles. Yep, it's the same thing. Okay, all the best for a great read. Okay. Oh, this one has a map. This one has a map. Okay. Eranor. Carlisto. There's all these little places on there as well. Eranor in 3972 AN. AN. Okay. And then it starts with like a poem okay and then uh, there's a prelude and then chapter one nice little thing right there okay finally we got one with that has a map Some of these like have dates on the top top of the chapter. So it, like that like I'm guessing that's a month. And then there's the date and whatever with the year. And then other ones, there's a it's just a a name. Okay. That's different. Oh, that one's got a name too. Maybe this all happens the same day. I don't know. Surprises here in terms of illustrations or anything. The map was nice though. Okay, epilogue. There we go. Let's have a quick look at the back. Adela Radagorian, innkeeper's daughter, seems an unlikely pawn in the great game played between these rival those rival gods who contest the fate of the world. Possessed of wit, beauty, and education common in her class, she finds herself bound up in events where the fate of empire just lies in the balance. An equally unlikely love imperils the foundation of her world, tears her away from the simple circumstances of her upbringing, and thrusts into the center stage of imperial politics. And then there's the emperor, Empire of Eranor. A corrupt and venal emperor. Proud and evil empress. Okay. Because you, you, know, like it, it, you can never have a good emperor. They always have to be evil. Amongst the highest and the lowest in the land, Adala stands at the center of that drama. One that obliges her to explore the utmost limits of her strength. Through many adventures, trials, successes, and disappointments, she learns that the head and the heart they stand at odds, but the voice of the heart is the truest guide of it last. Okay. Well. Wait, does it not list the chapters in this one? Oh, it does not. It, it, it's, got, it's got the map, but there's no list of chapters. So I can't just, like, easily guess as to how many okay well there's the epilogue how many chapters does it list at the back of the book 
23 plus the epilogue. Plus the prelude thingy. Okay. So roughly 25 chapters? For a book that has almost 400 pages? 383? 384? Okay. Around there? Okay. Interesting. Well, these will keep me very long busy for a very long time as will many of the other books that I have to read as well. So we got two books by Martin Dukes one by R.J. Weldrake I think maybe it's Weldrake I'm not sure. It's definitely a pseudonym I'm pretty sure of that uh, yeah okay anyway I gotta go pick up my son from school uh, everybody have a good day, and please do check out Martin Duke's works, R.J. Weldrake's books, and go check out my work at Amazon.com backslash author backslash Moffat, M-O-F-F-A-T. Okay, bye-bye. Happy reading.